This week, we continue exploring Nantucket Island off the coast of Massachusetts, then sail 60 nautical miles back to Rhode Island for some boat work in not the greatest of conditions. We visit Bartlett's farm, which has been on the island for over 200 years and grows boatloads of fruits and vegetables for the island's residents. We loved chatting with Keegan about his family's business, and Fabio couldn't resist whipping up a delicious farm-to-table meal with Bartlett's fresh veggies. I'm Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. We sold our home last year and moved aboard our Sea Wind 1600 Catamaran Wanderlust. Over the past year, we've sailed the waters of South Florida, the Keys, and the Bahamas, shaking down our new boat. We're now setting off on our journey to harbors unknown, exploring the world and connecting with people and places through the local cuisine. Subscribe now to join our voyage. We're here with Keegan Bartlett, and we're here on the farm, Bartlett Farms, and tell us a little bit about the farm. We've been here uh, uh, close to, officially close to 200 years now, wow. unofficially more than 200 years. Um, right now we're in our hydro house. This is all hydroponic basil right behind me, but we also do hydroponic greens mix, which is like mescaline and arugula and that kind of stuff. Um, and we also do heads of lettuce, mainly um, Boston bib, but we, we do as much as we can in here. Yep. Um, so this stuff is just long plastic tubes. Um, we use plastic because it's uh, hard to destroy, so it lasts a long time. Some of these have been used for like 20 years. Um, we recently just expanded it um, from that one table down there to this one as well. So some of them are a little bit newer. Um, but we're able to run this even in the, not the depths of winter, but um, through November and starting again in uh, about March. So it's a much longer growing season in this controlled environment. That's great. Yeah, I noticed you have the plastic out in the fields too, right? Yeah, so, so you... that's more for uh, like weed control ah. and, and making sure that the plant has the right nutrients and everything is staying compact in there. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Well, that's more soft plastic. This is uh, like the heart. Okay. You just got the water flowing in through here. Oh. It comes in through here, it goes back there, and in the back there's a big tank circulating everything. That's great. when they've just been stretched to their absolute limits. Um, we have been growing these type of tomato plants for about 40 years, not me personally. My Uncle Dave, who runs all of the agricultural side of the business right now, his nickname is Tomato Man. Because yeah. him and his twin brother, my father, started growing tomatoes when they were six years old. Oh, wow. They've gotten pretty good at it. They, they got these tomato plants really pumping out giant tomatoes. Yeah, they're I, beautiful. I it goes started down there, second crop here, and they're just getting to the last crop over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what variety of tomato is it? Uh, beef steak. Beef steak, okay. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. So each one of these stalks has one to two years of corn on it. Um, Generally, it has one. If it has two, that means they're, they're each going to be a little bit smaller. Yeah, so this is called silk. Yep. And once this starts to pop out, that means it's about three weeks until it's going to be ready. So the corn um, fertilizes itself, if that makes sense. Um, hmm. The male and female parts are included in the same organ, per se. Um, and so the, uh, lack of a better term, semen comes out of the... Uh, Silk and it drips down oh. and gets everything going. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah. And then the old saying goes um, from the farmer's almanac, knee high by the 4th of July. Okay. And that's going to be a good crop. Oh. So our stuff was about shoulder high on July 1st. That's but then we didn't have any sun for three weeks. So oh. it kind of evens out. So our first crop was uh, two days ago. So the 18th, July 18th, which is about average for what we do every summer sometimes it'll be ready on the 11th sometimes not till like the 25th but right around that time and we pick about 
on average 60 crates a day. Each crate has about 50 years, so I'm not sure what that math is. 3,000 about wow. every day. Wow. Yeah, and we run through that. Sometimes we have to go pick another 60 in the afternoon. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, by far our most favorite crop. Um, tomatoes is very close second. This is something that everybody thinks I'm crazy for, sure. but this is the only way I eat corn. Yeah. We've gone more organic recently, so some of them have a little bit of uh, yeah. raw on the top, but you can just rip that right off. I swear this is the freshest, best corn you'll ever have. <laughs> Yeah, both of you. And you don't even have to cook it. No. I think it's better uncooked, really? personally. Yeah. Well, We'd grill corn for dinner last night and I didn't eat any of it. No, because you like it fresh. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Bartlett's Farms Market, next to their garden center, is where all of the great produce, goods, and services come together under one roof. A full grocery store selling the highest quality products, locally sourced if possible, along with a full-service deli offering delicious prepared foods, sandwiches, and baked goods. What a gem! And there's, is there a way to tell which corn is kind of? I just look for holes like this. Uh, that's, that's where um, like worms will get in. Okay. Um, everybody likes to open it up, but that yeah. just kind of dries it out. Uh, yeah, so I just make sure there's not any obvious holes. I try to get the meaty ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys will work out of this, but thank you so much. Thank you. Fabio's been on a Sitata tear in the mornings with the zucchini stuff. I like to, so. I like to chop up the uh, um, summer squash and just like hand dry. Yeah. I had you guys before. Uh, yep. Here are the tomatoes from Barley Farm. Fresh, from the vine, beautiful. And what do you do with these great tomatoes? Caprese, we have some nice fresh mozzarella, locally produced. It's very important that you let the mozzarella come to temperature. You can't just take it out of the fridge and, and slice it. That's, that's a crime. Beautiful extra virgin olive oil from Italy. And another awesome gift, balsamic vinegar from Modena. So Chris, what else we got? We have some zucchini and some squash that we're gonna saute with some onions. Fresh, sweet corn, and I am really looking forward to try this. <laughs> and then we have this fantastic swordfish that we bought at Glidens Island Seafood. We're going to saute an onion for our vegetables, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, the onions here. Yeah. While we saute the onions, we're gonna boil the water for the corn and prepare the caprese. Tomato. Look at this guy here, how red it is. Wow, totally different flavor what you buy. Yum. <laughs> Tastes like a tomato, not like air. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Mozzarella now is at room temperature. Mozzarella is beautiful, you can see it. Just slice it. And the reason why we want to serve it at room temperature because it has fat in it and the fat needs to melt in order for you to taste it. Here is Kerrigan. She is a 
shocking expert. It's Maryland native. It's what I'm taught. And as a struggling college student, this is one of the three meals that I know how to prepare. <laughs> just gonna come right off the top. Just peel, start peeling away. Yoda. And you're gonna see all Yoda. those hairs, and those hairs are gonna wanna go. See, there's already some on my leg. They're already wanna, just wanna fly everywhere. Just wanna do it in a bag, but just outside in general. And just do that. And try to get it down as far as you can to the base. Ah, just strip off the hairs as you go. And then when you get down to the bottom and it's not really coming off, oh, it just came off, you just snap it off. Nice. Wow. Bottom part. It's on the wrist. Yes. And then if you see like a struggling part up here, like you don't really want to eat that, so you can just chop that off as well. There you go. That's nice. This is really fresh corn. That's <laughs> Very great. Fresh corn. So seven minutes have gone by. The corn is ready, steamed, beautiful. We'll take it out and let it rest for a minute until the other stuff is ready. Set it here. Do this for like 15 minutes. We're gonna, we're gonna prepare our yellow squash. And then we have the sprigs of thyme that a good friend of ours gave us in here. And squash in the pan. Fish, you don't want to do much with it. You just want to dry it out. Make sure there's no humidity on no moisture on it. A little bit of flour. Fresh crushed pep black pepper. So why do you put the flour? I'm not quite sure. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think it uh, I think that the the flour caramelizes it a little bit on the outside, makes it brown, but if any of you know why we put flour in it, let me know. Yeah, confident. I like your first answer better. You told me what it did. <laughs> yeah, because people are trying to learn. Yeah. But it's, that's what we do back at home. Stop. I don't know why. Come you on. You just said it. It blackens it. I you said it makes it not stick to the pan. It helps blacken. Yeah, I think it does. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Squash is done, ready to be eaten. Let's we'll turn it off. Looks delicious. It smells beautiful. <laughs> Corn, boom. We have the swordfish. We have the zucchini and the yellow squash sauteed with onions and uh, thyme sprigs. Traditionally, you should have a slab of butter that you would roll the corn in, but we're a little bit healthier on this boat. <laughs> so we're just going to do a nice lather like this. All right. All right. So Thanks. we got it. Thanks for making this delicious dinner. No, thank you guys for watching. Sadly, our time in Nantucket has come to an end and we need to sail back to Rhode Island for some boat work. We truly enjoyed our time on this charming island and can't thank Keegan Bartlett enough for giving us a tour of his family's farm. Connecting with people like him makes our experiences even more special.
Okay. Yesterday's happiness gets nearer. The light that we see closing in so fast ahead. It's hope, it's getting clearer. The more I think of all the tough times we survived, the more it makes me smile. If nothing's broken us, you're nothing ever will. Cause dreams are hard to kill. And I know somewhere, somewhere's a place where we can build our memories. Somewhere, just hold on tight.
you missed last week's episode, be sure to watch that and join us for a stroll through Nantucket's charming historic downtown. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.